watching and welcome back to my channel. All right, it is time for the next guide in my Pearson Comprehensive Guide series. This time I will be focused on the eyebrow Pearson. Now for anyone that is new to my Pearson Comprehensive Guides, basically what these guides are is I focus on a specific Pearson and go over five different topics regarding it. Those topics are what is the Pearson, the procedure and pain of getting that Pearson, the healing and aftercare of that Pearson, the jewelry size and typically for that Pearson, as well as jewelry options for that particular Pearson. As always, these guide topics are voted on by my patrons, so if you'd like to vote on the next Pearson comprehensive guide, you can go check out my Patreon. All right, so like I said, today's guide is all about the eyebrow Pearson. So we're gonna start off with what is an eyebrow Pearson? Funnily enough, an eyebrow Pearson is a Pearson around your eyebrow. Who would have thought? But in all seriousness, an eyebrow Pearson is a Pearson found anywhere along your eyebrows. So standard eyebrow Pearsons are located kind of upwards from the outer corner of your eye, usually around the arch of your eye. Now they can seriously go any part of the eyebrow and your piercer is gonna look at it, kind of gauge your anatomy, figure out where the best place is, but Typically, the standard is up from the outer corner of your eye and around the arch. The eyebrow piercing is technically a surface piercing, which unfortunately means that it is prone to migration and rejection, which no one wants to think about or deal with. But it's something that you do need to think about when planning to get an eyebrow piercing. You can also have multiple eyebrow piercings. However, it is recommended that you do one at a time. And you really, 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 I mean, for any piercing, you need to go find a professional because there is a need to make sure that the piercing goes deep enough to lessen the chance of migration or rejection happening. Because if it's done too shallow, that rate of potential migration or rejection increases. Now, this is not to say that if it does go deep enough that it won't happen, but the chance is a little bit less. So now that you know exactly what piercing we're talking about, let's discuss the procedure and pain of getting this piercing done. Now, as you can tell, I personally do not have any eyebrow piercings, so a lot of this information is not personal. A lot of this comes from research found online, as well as from some of my followers on Instagram who do have an eyebrow piercing. So, Procedure wise, pretty much is the same as with any other piercing. Your piercer is going to look at your anatomy and kind of determine some good spots for an eyebrow piercing to go. They're gonna mark it. They're gonna allow you to look at it, determine if you like those marks, which one you may like, especially if they give you multiple options. If you don't like any of those options, they might go back and rework some markings. Once you have landed on something, the piercer is going to go through the whole step of, you know, disinfecting the area, getting a clean needle, all that stuff that you're going to typically come across with other piercings. And much like with other piercings, your piercer may or may not use a clamp that is usually up to their preference. I saw both ways online. I saw videos where they used a clamp. I saw videos where they didn't use a clamp. It is up to the personal preference of the piercer and what they're comfortable with. Same thing with whether or not you may lie down or sit up. I found kind of went both ways. It did seem like more people sat up for this person, but I did come across a few videos where they were lying down. Again, I do not have this person, so I cannot tell you what the pain is on this. So I did take to Instagram and I put up a little question. Hey, you have an eyebrow piercing on a scale of one to 10, one being nothing at all, 10 being, oh my wow, that was the worst thing ever. What would you rate getting the eyebrow pierced? And the average came out to two, which means this person doesn't seem like it hurts at all, which is understandable. You know, you think about the eyebrow, there's, there's just flesh up there. That doesn't seem like it would be the worst thing in the world to get done. Now, this is not to say that it won't feel like anything when you get it done. It may feel like a pinch, maybe a little bit uncomfortable because they're all up in your eye area. But for the most part, most people find that this one isn't bad, which I always wanted an eyebrow piercing. I'm not sure I'd ever get one at this point, but I always wanted one over here on my left eyebrow. I don't know why. I don't like the left side of my face as much as I do my right. So I thought maybe if I got an eyebrow piercing over there, I'd like it a little bit more. Maybe someday I'll get it done. But for now, I'm content. Maybe someday I'll get it done. Who knows? So moving on to healing and aftercare. No one's favorite part. So how long does it take for this piercing to heal? The general understanding was about two to three or four months. So it really doesn't take that long to heal, which is great. You know, you look at cartilage piercings that take up to a year. It's nice and refreshing to hear 
that a piercing can be healed in about two months. It's usually the minimum, but about two to four months seems to be the average. Now this is one of those piercings where you're reading about it, you're researching about it, and you get two things. It's easy to heal and it's hard to heal. So you're left there going like, which is it? So it's easy to heal in the sense that it's not cartilage, you know, it's, it's a fleshier area. It's kind of like lip piercings. They don't take that long to heal. However, it's difficult to heal because of that high rejection and migration rate. It is a surface piercing, so it is up there in the risk factor of rejection and migration, which makes it a little bit more difficult to heal just because of that possibility. These piercings do seem to be a little bit moody. Is that the good way to put it? Moody, a little bit temperamental, a little bit just kind of depends on how they're feeling. You know, we can say that about our ear piercings all the time. I feel like piercings in general just can have their own mood or temperament and it's all up to how our body wants to deal with it. But it does kind of seem like the eyebrow piercing really fits the bill on that one. It can also be a difficult piercing to heal just because of where it is on the face and how many products or how many just elements can come in contact with it. So like for example, if you're washing your face, the facial cleanser coming in contact with it, putting on makeup, makeup coming in contact with it. So many things get around this area that that may potentially prolong the process if you're not conscious of it, if you're not really thinking about it. As I always mention in all of these videos, how do you clean said piercing? How do you clean an eyebrow piercing? So the standard aftercare of any piercing is salt solution. You can either do a pre-made one like H2Ocean or Neomed. I always mention that Neomed is my preferred one. I used to use H2Ocean, nothing wrong with it, but I just prefer a Neomed. You spray it on there, let it soak for a little bit, make sure to rinse it off because you don't want that salt sitting there forever because that can also lead to more irritation. Some people will tell you you don't need to rinse off the pre-made solutions. However, just to be on the safe side, I always do. Even if it's just like taking a Q-tip and wiping around the area. If you don't want to use a pre-made one, you can make your own, but just make sure that you're using the proper ingredients and the proper measurements. And what that means is you're gonna take eight ounces or one cup of distilled or bottled water. Do not use tap water because tap water does have things in it that may not be good for a brand new Pearson. It's just better to avoid that. You're gonna take that water Water, and you're gonna mix either one eighth to one fourth of a teaspoon of non iodized sea salt in there. Do not use more than one fourth of a teaspoon. Even though you may think it speeds up the healing process, it could potentially slow it down. You're gonna mix that up. You're gonna take a Q-tip, you're gonna take a cotton round, or with the eyebrow piercing, you could take like a shot glass, get the mixture in there and just like hold it up there. I mean, don't tilt back because it might go everywhere. But you're gonna hold it up there and just kind of let it soak for a bit, remove whatever it is that you're using, rinse it, and you're good to go. If you're gonna use things like Q-tips, which is what I personally use, however, you will find a lot of people don't like Q-tips, because of the little fibers that could get wrapped around the Pearson. Just be mindful of that. And if you do notice that anything gets wrapped around the jewelry, just kind of remove it. Make sure you are not using certain things like Neosporin, Bactine, hydrogen peroxide, or alcohol products. Alcohol products dry out the skin. Neosporin kind of suffocates the area. It also heals it which yes, it's a wound and you want it to heal, but not the way that Neosporin heals it. Bectine also tells you on their website, don't use this on Pearson's. So if the actual product is telling you to not use it on something, probably your best bet is to not use it on something. <laughs> All of these things are way too harsh to be using on a brand new Pearson. Heck, they're even too harsh to be using on a healed one. And as always, make sure you're not messing with the jewelry. Don't sit there and like spin it. I feel like that wouldn't work out too well for you, but don't sit there and mess with the jewelry because that can also prolong the process. Also something to keep in mind about eyebrows specifically. Like I mentioned, certain products might come in contact with it and prolong the healing process because it might irritate it. So like facial cleansers or even makeup, make sure to avoid that area because even though facial cleansers are great for the rest of your face, they're not gonna be good for a brand new Pearson. Same with makeup, it's fine to put on the rest of your face, but kind of avoid the area of wherever the Pearson is just to make sure that that product doesn't get in there. Other things to be mindful of when it comes to eyebrow Pearsons, if you're someone who waxes their eyebrows, maybe lay off of that until your piercing is healed. From what I gathered, you can still pluck your eyebrows, but be very careful doing so. Don't like keep hitting the jewelry because that's gonna irritate it. But if you do need to pluck your eyebrows, just be careful with it, be mindful of it, and just watch what you're doing. Also watch for hair getting wrapped around the jewelry. So you see how I have side bangs and I was just talking about how I thought about getting my left eyebrow done. Well, my bangs are covering where my eyebrow piercing would be probably. So you gotta be mindful of 
hairs that make it wrapped around the jewelry. Kind of like you do with your ear piercings. It really just depends. So like for me, maybe the better option would be to get my right eyebrow done because there are no bangs on that side. However, that doesn't mean that stray hairs from here couldn't get wrapped around it. So it's just something to be mindful of. All right, moving on to everyone's favorite part, jewelry. Let's start with jewelry size. And what can you expect to put in an eyebrow piercing? So eyebrow piercings are typically pierced at a 16 gauge. Length really depends on your anatomy. The standard sizing for eyebrow piercings are 5 16th of an inch as well as 3 8 of an inch. So you may find that you get pierced with 16 gauge 3 8 of an inch because that one is the longer length between the two. However, you may find that you could potentially downsize to 5 16 of an inch. From what I gathered, piercers like it when the jewelry is flush with the skin so that all you can see are the ends. We'll get into more of like what you can actually wear in there, but the standard are curved barbells and because they are curved, they've got the two ends. Piercers typically like to see that flush with the skin. However, you may experience some swelling, so a longer length may be necessary initially. Again, a lot of this relies on your anatomy and how deep the jewelry can go, but the standard is 16 gauge as well as 5 16ths of an inch or 3 8 of an inch. From what I researched, it seems like you don't want it to be too long because then it can wiggle more, but you also don't want it to be too short because then that can really put pressure on that jewelry. So then moving on to jewelry options, what can you actually wear? in an eyebrow piercing. So the most common type of jewelry that you're gonna find in there is a curved barbell. That is just a little curvature. It's got the two ends. Sometimes they're just balls. Sometimes they might be little spikes. They might be gems, anything like that. That is the standard of what you're gonna find in an eyebrow piercing, standard of what you're gonna find it initially pierced with. It's also gonna be the recommended jewelry for an initial piercing. However, you can also put hoops in your eyebrow piercing. This is not recommended as an initial jewelry. But once the piercing is healed, you can swap it out to a hoop if you want. You can do something like seamless ring, hinged ring, captive bead ring, whatever. Just make sure that it's big enough that your eyebrow isn't being pulled on with it. We also don't want it to be too big that it's just like wobbling all over the place. So that is just a little rundown about eyebrow piercings. Again, I do not personally have one. However, through the research and through asking people who have an eyebrow piercing, this is what I was able to gather. Let me know in the comments below if you have an eyebrow piercing. What was your process like for it to be done, to be healed? Do you love it? Have you been thinking about removing it? Has it caused you problems? Have you experienced rejection or migration or anything like that? Let me know all the details. Also, if you've been considering getting an eyebrow piercing, have you done your research? Have you decided what side you'd want it on? Do you want to go for the standard where it's around the arch area? Or are you thinking another style? Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you would like to vote on the next Pearson Comprehensive Guide, be sure to check out my Patreon for those poll options. Special thank you to my patrons. You can help support the channel on Patreon while having access to videos early, viewing patron-only content, and more. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. Go on down there, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when I upload next. But until next time, bye y'all!